thank you for tonight and thank you for putting me in this lineup. I am so impressed with what I've heard. I'm so excited to be here. This is my first time here. I'm, I'm amazed. Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm published their first edition of German folk tales in 1812. And you know what we call that, the Grimm's fairy tales. But those tales uh, can be traced back to the pagan times and moved beyond Germany to Russia, the Slavic countries, Greece, Italy, and even ancient Sanskrit texts. One of those stories was called Godfather Death. And there is another version called Godmother Death that you can find also in Mexico and Lithuania. J. Frank Doby published the Mexican version in the book Tongues of the Monte. It's chapter eight, and I'm going to read uh, the story. It's only really a part of the chapter. I'm going to read the story in honor of Doby, but also in honor of Dio de las Muertas. Grandmother Death. Let me see I can see this. The single room jacal in which Pablo, his wife, and four children ate and slept was under the mountain far out from the city. They did not eat much, often not even tortillas, and Pablo ate least of all. Had any man hired Pablo, he would have been obliged to feed him for a week in order to produce strength for a day's work. But he neither sought the wage of bread nor sought was sought by it, and as day by day, in sunshine and in shadow, he crouched with sombrero on head and head on knees, the life sense pulsed on in him. Now it was the day of the dead that day when all of Mexico toasts death herself and familiarly, without fear, because she has seen so often, makes her a comrade. In pulque shops, men were drinking out of goblets carved into skulls. In humble homes, women were setting out for those who have ceased to be the big loafed bread of the dead. In the market booths, Vendors were eagerly offering toy hearses, jumping jack skeletons, and doll corpses that leapt out of coffins at the pull of a string. Into the graveyards, throngs were carrying the yellow flower of the dead, there to spend the day burning candles and drinking wine in honor of the silent host beneath the sod, spreading over tombs picnic lunches from which the children would merrily devour sweets cut in the forms of urns, crossbones, and death's heads, while balladists sang and peddled broadsides displaying the skull as both clown and king. And on this morning of the festival of the dead, Pablo and his wife Concha found themselves the parents of another child. It was their tenth, but five of them were in the Campo Santo and did not have to be fed. The father and the mother took counsel as to who should be the new one's godmother. It was a boy. They spoke of this woman and of that woman, but neither could arrive at a decision with himself or herself, much less with the other. Only they were agreed that the madrina chosen should be just and merciful and, if God were willing, potent. Then Pablo said, this day the whole world is astir to do honor to death. I will go out upon the road towards the city and find a madrina. Yes, go, Concha said. And Concha said, and remember that it is a boy. Choose well for justice and mercy and power to help. Perhaps, too, you may find some crumbs of the pan para los muertos that I may eat and give milk. So Pablo went out. He had not traveled far before he was overtaken by a carriage carrying, as he recognized, the wife of the owner of the hacienda on which by sufferance his hut stood. The woman was beautifully dressed, and this morning she shone with the light of charity. 
She bade her driver halt the carriage. Good morning, senor, she said in politeness. Who are you? Buenos dias, senora, he answered, his hat off. I am the father of a newborn child, a male. Then you are seeking a madrina? Yes, he answered. I am looking for a godmother. I will act as a madrina for your child. For a moment, Pablo hesitated while the memories of generations went through his mind. Then, no, he answered. You have so much that you will not care for more. You are like God. You give to those who already have much. From those who have nothing, you take away. While it is in your power to be just, you idly watch the poor man slave all his life, his family starving, and the rich oppressor growing richer. No, I thank you, senora, but I cannot choose you for a godmother. The rich woman drove proudly on, and Pablo followed in the dust. A long way down the road, by a scummy hole of water in a solitary place of rocks, he saw another woman, afoot as he was, dressed in dirty rags as he was dressed. While he paused to drink, she arose from her knees, on which she had bent to lap the water. Buenos dias, senora, he said. Good morning, senor, she responded. Ave Maria, purissima of the refuge. It was evident that she was the most humble of the folk who called themselves humilde. And when she gave the salutation of the Virgin Mary, Pablo gravely gave it back. In grace, conceived without original sin. And who are you, she asked. I am the poor father of a newborn and am seeking for him a godmother. Oh, she said, I am but a beggar woman, but I have eaten of the bread that brings to Christian souls pity and charity. My soul glorifies the Savior. I will stand as madrina for your little boy. Pablo's heart was touched. Yet again, he hesitated. But no, he slowly answered, you are merciful and you would do what you could. But as this world goes, there is no potency in lowliness and poverty. I seek for my son's future, and I cannot choose you. My heart gives thanks. Now go with God.